What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today we're gonna to be discussing how to choose the right Yu-Gi-Oh deck for you. One question that I constantly receive from new or returning players is what deck should I play? And honestly, that's not really for me to answer. And the reason for that is because there are so many different deck choices out there and some that maybe haven't even been discovered yet. And that's where the creativity of Yu-Gi-Oh truly lies. And so for new or returning players, it may seem overwhelming to kind of just jump right into Yu-Gi-Oh when there's over 10,000 cards that have been printed numerous amount of archetypes, endless amounts of decks. And so today I'm going to pose a few questions that you should consider when wanting to choose the deck for you. So the first question is, do you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh casually or competitively? This is something you're going to hear players discuss a lot, but I think it's definitely a good starting point to divide yourself into one of these two categories because it's going to help narrow down your choices. Now, don't get confused. You can theoretically play any deck either casually or competitively, but if you're looking at a hierarchy, you're going to notice that some decks are objectively better than others, and those usually start to swing more into the competitive camp. And so I think there's two completely separate mindsets when you're wanting to play casually or competitively. When you want to play casually, your sole objective is to have fun. Now, obviously winning is a part of having fun, but I think that falls secondary to just having fun playing what you're doing. While conversely, competitive players are focused on winning and improving by any means necessary. So to a casual player, they may not mind playing a strategy like Exodia or Destiny Board because by achieving that alternate win condition, to them that is very satisfying that they won the game that way, even if they're only going to win the game that way one out of 10 games that they play. A competitive player, however, is going to want to focus on winning as many games as possible, and there might be a lot of trial and error to find what strategy really works best for them in any sort of competitive metagame. Casual players may want to play a deck because it's sentimental to them, or they really like the art style, or the lore, or the mechanics of a particular archetype where competitive players aren't necessarily focused on those things, while it may be part of the reason that contributes to them wanting to play it, they're going to focus on if this deck mechanically is going to help them see the highest chance of success. So by setting a goal for yourself as to whether or not you want to play for fun or play to win, I think that's going to help steer you in the right direction. Now, the second question I want to pose is what is your preferred style of play? Now, there's a whole discussion to be had here. Some people don't believe play styles exist. Some people believe that decks and players can take on multiple play styles, and while I believe that as well, I think this is a good way to help at least guide you in the proper direction for a deck that you really like. So for the purposes of this video, I've divided play styles into four separate archetypes, aggro, combo, control, and stun. So to kick things off, aggro decks are decks that are focused on winning the game as quickly as possible. You'll see this happen through numerous forms, but typically it'll be by reducing your opponent's life points to zero through multiple attacks. With the objective of wanting to end the game as quickly as possible, you're in the driver's seat. Your opponent's having to react to what you want to do, and if you can stop them before their game plan gets into effect, then that's how you're going to win the game. Now, aggro decks can take on multiple forms. Some popular aggro decks right now are decks like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are just so good at being able to swarm the field, put out incredibly powerful monsters that can make not just one, but even multiple attacks, and can really just easily OTK the opponent, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Another example of an aggro deck is something like Gren Maju. Gren Maju's sole focus is to just banish as many cards as possible, get your Gren Maju up to 16 billion attack, and just one shot your opponent with one single hit. But there's another type of aggro deck that I want to discuss, and that is combo decks. So rather than winning just through sheer raw attack power, combo decks are aiming to execute either a one, two, maybe three card combination that's ultimately going to result in them winning the game, regardless of if the opponent's life points are 8,000 or zero. Take for instance, if you've ever lost any sort of deep draw Exodia deck that's trying to win the game on turn one, that would be a textbook example of a combo deck. Now, obviously there are combo decks that are FTKs or first turn kills that will drain your opponent's life points to zero in some way or another, but there's also combo decks that ultimately win the game on the very first turn before the opponent can really have the chance to do much at all. These combo decks are aiming to just build up a board of numerous threats, and it's going to be difficult if not impossible for your opponent to break that board, and then you should basically have the game on lock and can just win by attacking with everything on the following turn. Some modern examples of combo decks would be decks like Adamancipator or Infernoble Knight. But while 
we have aggro decks and combo decks on one end of the spectrum, we have control decks and stun decks on the other. Now, while aggro decks are aiming to end the game as quickly as possible, control decks are wanting to prolong the game until they get to a point where they basically make it so that they're going to win the game through sheer attrition. Take, for instance, a game where both players have 8,000 life points. One player has zero cards and the other player has six. The player with six cards is going to have full control of the game and they have to make the opponent react to what they're doing. And even if the opponent does have something that they can do, the player with six cards is most likely going to be able to have something to stop that advance. And it's really not going to matter if they're at 8,000 life points or not, because eventually the control player will win through sheer inevitability. And that's why you see a lot of control decks maybe only doing 1,000, 1,500, maybe 2,000 damage in a turn, because they're focused on making sure that they're not going to let the opponent do what they want to do. Some modern examples of control decks would be decks like Eldritch or Sky Striker. But just as combo decks are an extreme version of aggro decks, stun decks are an extreme version of control decks. The primary focus of stun decks is to ensure the opponent cannot play as many cards as humanly possible. Stun decks will typically mold themselves around whatever's going on in a particular competitive metagame because they are usually hard countering whatever is the most present. Effects in these types of decks can range from banishing all cards that go to the graveyard, making it so that your opponent can't special summon, making it so that each player can only control like one type of monster. There are so many different stun cards that exist in the game, and you'll sometimes see stun cards side decked for sure, but stun decks in particular are going to be playing card after card to make it even more oppressive for your opponent to be able to play the game. And some sadistic minded individuals very much enjoy playing this way because they love seeing their opponent struggle to overcome something that's so seemingly simple. And stun sometimes even takes the form in modern meta strategies as well. Not too long ago, we had Thunder Dragon Colossus in the metagame, and that was one of the strongest stun cards we had ever seen. But some modern examples of stun decks would be decks such as Inspector Border Stun or Barrier Statue Stun. And maybe as I was discussing each of these strategies a little bit in depth, maybe one of them spoke out to you. Maybe it evoked some sort of feeling internally that that's really what you're looking to get out of playing a card game. And so if you felt that, that's definitely the direction you should be taking. But that's going to bring us to our third question to ask yourself, and that is, what other decks are people playing that you would likely go up against? Now, some people would argue that this is probably a competitively skewed question because competitive players are very focused on what others are playing so that they can help combat it as easily as possible. But I didn't want to just solely associate that with competitive play because casual players, while they are focused on having fun, they may want to focus on what the other opponents are playing because maybe that'll create for a better experience for them. Take for an example, if a casual player maybe goes to their local games store and maybe they find a group of players that are playing a bunch of decks that are based around the anime, whether it's the Duelist Kingdom anime, the GX anime, etc, etc. Maybe they'll want to get involved and play a deck like that as well, because maybe that's the type of Yu-Gi-Oh that they enjoy playing. Conversely, for the competitive side of things, maybe a player will go into locals and notice that five out of the eight players there are all playing the same deck, so they'll want to play a deck that they know will hard counter that strategy to increase their likelihood of winning. So you can see how all of these questions start to meld together when you really think about it and start to go piece by piece and really break down what you're truly looking for when it comes to picking a certain deck. And that's going to bring us to the fourth and final question, and that is, what are you most looking forward to getting out of playing Yu-Gi-Oh? As an example, if you're looking to make friends with others, maybe don't play a stun deck that's going to piss them off. Or maybe you're looking to challenge yourself. Maybe you've never played a combo deck before and you want to start getting better at the game. And so you're going to slowly start to educate yourself on what combo decks do, how they function, and challenge yourself to excel using a combo deck. Maybe you're the type of player I discussed at the beginning of this video that enjoys winning through alternative win conditions as wacky as they may May be. And again, even if you get that off one out of 10, one out of 20, maybe even one out of 100 times, the one time you do, you're going to never let your opponent forget it. But ultimately, everyone's definition of fun is purely subjective and players are going to follow their hearts in terms of what they look for to achieve that level of satisfaction and satisfy what they define as fun. And so that's why you're going to see people playing stun decks. That's why you're going to see people playing combo decks. You're going to see people playing decks from all across the 
Spectrum and from my time playing this game since the game came out, that has always been present. And so while I may not be able to help you guys pick the exact deck that you're looking for, I hope this video is going to give you some positive direction in figuring out what the next steps are for you to take to find the deck that you truly love. So that's going to do it for today's video. Guys, let me know down in the comments what you guys think and what advice you may have to any players looking to pick a particular deck. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member just by showing your support in any way that you can. You're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again. We'll see you next time.